Hello, welcome to episode 168 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, A Thousand One Movies You Must See Before You Die. Shame. Again, I uh, just talked about Shame from 2011, uh, and in this one, we're talking about Shame from 1968, directed by Swedish director Ingmar Bergman, who seems to have a shit ton of films in the book. In fact, he might be rivaling Hitchcock with uh, the director with the most entries into the Thousand and One Movies book. Uh, Shame uh, stars the incredible Liv Ullmann and uh, Max von Sydow as the, the the main stars, the main characters of the movie. A couple living on this kind of war-torn island in an unspecified country in Europe. Um, and you have this couple who live on a kind of a, not a farm, but they have this this house that's in the middle of nowhere, really. It's uh, it's off the grid, and they, you know, they, they kind of get food and stuff, and they go and sell things in the town, but they have a very simple life. And the feeling you get from the characters, the way they talk about it, is that this, this war, this impending invasion, is something that's just been kind of threatened for many years and has never really come to full fruition. And so they don't really take it too seriously. You know, ah, oh, they've been saying for years they're going to invade, you know. And we never find out what kind of war this was, if even it was based on any kind of real war. And it came out around the time of the Vietnam War, so it was kind of... Uh, a lot of people who saw the film when it came out thought that it was this commentary on Vietnam, which Bergman said it wasn't. Um, and I think that it's it's nice that it isn't specified. It's just one of those stories that, you know, uh, you can kind of relate to any other war, really. And in, in that sense, it frees up the... Uh, uh, the way that you can look at it, because uh, I think that some of the best war story films are based on characters who are on the periphery, who aren't inside the war. They're not soldiers, they're not on the battlefield, they're not in the trenches. They're the people who get affected by it. Uh, we see their day-to-day -day life, and from the beginning of Shame, we see this couple in a very kind of naturalistic way, just getting up in the morning, getting ready to go out, you know, just all those things. I mean, there's a scene where Liv Ullman's, you know, pajama shirt is open, you, you see her breasts and stuff, and it's one of those instances where nudity actually adds to it because you just get this total sense of um, comfort with these two characters who, who've been together and... Uh, you know, are just just living their life basically, and there's a, a wonderful scene where they're sat down and they're kind of having some wine and they're kind of celebrating that they even had enough money to buy a bottle of wine and they're you know it's just a couple in a happy moment and she's talking about how she wants to have kids before she's a certain age and stuff and um, it's a very endearing relationship uh, and in fact you get the feeling that she is the more dominant of the two. Uh, he has these moments where he gets a bit emotional and and she kind of takes takes charge in a way and so the, the roles are kind of switched there. But by the second half of the film, it kind of reverts back to the more stereotypical thing of the man taking charge and being the, the aggressor and the woman being more kind of um, subservient in a way in the relationship. Because halfway through the film, the invasion happens and bombs are dropped all around their house and there's this just stunning sequence where they're inside their house and just bombs are going off and it's just it's quite terrifying you know and I wasn't expecting that from this film. I wasn't really sure what to expect to be honest, I just dove into it blind pretty much. Uh, and interesting to note that uh, another film from 1968, also directed by Ingmar Bergman, also stars these two actors as a couple, a married couple. So, yeah, uh, quite the combination, uh, Liv Ullmann, Max von Sydow, and Ingmar Bergman. Uh, I love the two main actors. I think Liv Ullmann is a fantastic actress, I really do. Uh, but in the final scene of the film, uh, which Connie kind of walked in on, uh, she was like, wow, her acting was terrible. I'm like, really? I, th I think she's incredible, and she's like, oh, yeah, because the thing was, I mean, it's a Swedish film starring uh, a Swedish actor, Max von Sydow, and a Norwegian actress, Liv Ullmann. She is Norwegian, and so <clears throat> I know there's differences between the, the Swedish and Norwegian languages, and apparently from Connie, who would hear these things, being Norwegian herself, uh, Liv Ullmann was, was using Swedish words, but it, 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 it sounded weird to her in uh, the way that she was speaking it, I guess. And that goes back to that, that age-old conversation I have with myself over, is this really good acting, or am I just not getting that it's bad acting because I can't understand the language? But uh, it still sold me. So as far as my perspective goes, I still thought, th thought she gave a great acting performance, but Connie wasn't sold on the, the Swedish words she was using, which is really interesting to me, but nevertheless, didn't ruin my enjoyment of the film, which is a very bleak film, especially towards the end, and a lot of things happen, you know, and uh, when this uh, this army invades, there's, there's some interesting uh, character moments, I'll say, I won't spoil anything, but uh, the, the relationship between these two, this couple, 
really gets tested by the war, and uh, and that I find really uh, captivating. And there's just something about Bergman's films, even when there's not much going on, I'm kind of captivated by what's going on on screen. And I think that also speaks to the actors, uh, Sidow and, and Ullman, I think they're fantastic together. I know they did a lot of films together as a couple. Um, and this one was a really good one. Uh, is it a film you should see before you die? Uh, I'm going to cautiously say yes. I think it's a very, very, very good film. Uh, it kind of lost me a bit towards the end, um, but that kind of speaks to the bleak nature of it, I suppose. But I, yeah, I wasn't a, a big fan of the last 15 minutes or so. But I think it's a great film that shows you, again, war on the periphery, people on the outside of it who, and again, people who think, you know, while we're out in, on this island, you know, uh, we have to take a ferry to go to town. We'll be fine on the island, surely. We'll be fine in the middle of nowhere. And I think a lot of people who live in those less populated areas think that they're safe from, you know, from anything like that. And in a lot of cases they are, but it kind of really makes you think, well, well, shit, what if I wasn't? And it's really scary in that way. And, uh... And just makes you think about people who've gone through stuff like that and how horrifying it really is. And the film conveys that very effectively, I think. So, yeah, I, I, cautiously, yeah, it is a film you should probably see before you die. And definitely worth a look, just for the just for those actors alone and for Bergman's direction. Um, very, very good film. So that's it for Shame. I think it's uh, a, a superior film than the 2011 Shame. But I... not by not by that much. I don't know, yeah. Maybe a little. I don't know. It, it, it's kind of hard to judge, but this is this is definitely one of the the least great films that I would say yes to, because I still think there's some worth in it, you know. And, and maybe if the whole thing, and I actually read actually somewhere that Ingmar Bergman said, I, I forget the exact quote, so I won't use it. Maybe I'll put it on screen somewhere. Uh, Bergman wasn't happy with this film. He felt like he didn't really follow through with it completely enough, and that he could have done the film better. And I think I agree with that. I think that more could have been gotten out of uh, this story, which I found so interesting. And there's some really powerful moments in the film too, which I won't spoil for anyone who might see it. So thank you for watching. Uh, leave your thoughts down below if you've seen this and any other Bergman films in general. I'd love to talk more about this great director who I'm only just dipping my toes into the water of. And I guess I'm kind of savoring some of those films as well. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.